Um, and our first uh, application is uh, from Hannah Bardell uh, with a, an application for a debate in the Chamber um, on consular services for British citizens murdered, killed in suspicious circumstances or wrongly imprisoned overseas. Hannah, do you want to explain what, you, what, what your debate is about? Thank you very much, uh, Mr Blackman, and thank you to the committee for uh, hearing me today. And um, I'd just like to put on record as well thanks to my, my staff who have uh, helped me prepare for this and, and also to all of the families who have been touched or impacted by uh, the death of a loved one abroad or indeed who have been incarcerated abroad. And I think it's important to put on record that as we sit, Richard Radcliffe the husband of Nazanin Zakari Radcliffe is, I think, on his 10th day of hunger strike um, in, in protest against her incarceration. So I, it's against that backdrop that I, I put forward this, uh, this application. We had a debate um, back in 2018. I had an adjournment debate uh, on deaths abroad and consular services, and it was very oversubscribed, as, as is this. This, this uh, application has received support from parties across uh, the House, which I'm, I'm pleased to say, because there will not be a member in the House that will not be impacted by this issue. I think everybody in the House will have had a constituent come to them. They will have done what I did when uh, the family of Julie Pearson and Kirsty Maxwell came to me. Um, you raise issues, you raise concerns, you look for support, and families who are so often uh, left in the dark or without the right support. And I want to also say how important it is to put on record the incredible work that consular staff do. I was a consular staffer myself uh, many years ago, and I know the work that they do is incredibly difficult and challenging, and the work of the FCDO as well um, is incredibly difficult and complex. But the reality is that I set up an all-party group because of the experiences of my constituents. We took evidence from over 60 families from across the UK. And the level of support which the SEO at the time recognised in 2014 when the, um, when the Committee of the House took evidence um, on, on this issue, that the level of service fell far below what the public could reasonably expect. And sometimes there is, of course, a gap between public expectation and the level of service to be delivered. But nonetheless, that continues to be the case, and families are being let down time and again by the level of service and the lack of support. Um, now, that can be everything from translation of documents, court documents, basic health documents, to a lack of support to get a, the body of a loved one home or inappropriate advice. We, have, we had one, um, one woman who, who set up her own uh, support group, and this seems to be happening a lot, as lots of uh, those who have experienced such trauma or the loss of a loved one are setting up support networks and groups to fill the gap, frankly, of, of government. And I think that that's, that's a huge issue. And we want to work with the government to make services better. Uh, we've seen significant cuts to uh, the FCDO in recent years and cuts to you know, consular staff and, and uh, those who work in the Foreign Service. And so it's about looking at all of those issues post-Brexit you know, we are going to be doing trade deals with countries like Dubai, where we have people like Albert Douglas, uh, Billy Hood, um, being incarcerated and, and tortured, and you know we have lots of other issues, including things like rape and sexual offence. This is happening um, to British citizens who then, when they come home, or indeed when they are in country, are not getting the right help and support. And so, it's for that reason. And I think particularly timely as we come out of COVID and international travel opens up again, that we make sure that we have the right support in place and that we work with those uh, within government and indeed industry and in the insurance sector uh, to look at what further legislation and, and I would say hopefully at some point a, a legal right to consular assistance because we don't actually have that. Um, but that we work together across the House to make sure uh, that we, we find solutions to what is a really, really serious problem. And I would welcome any questions. OK, well, thank you. Can I just ask about any, any particular timeliness or any particular events that are going on which would want you to have a debate at a particular time? I mean, I think, as I said in the beginning, that you know, the particular backdrop of you know, 
Nazanin's case and, you know, where she finds herself, where her family find herself, you know, the, the, the situation that Richard finds himself in. And I had, you know, a conversation with another member from another party who I won't name earlier today, just about, you know, how, how terrifying and how devastating that, that situation is. And it has been high profile for a very long time, yet we have not managed to find a solution. And how many more families are in that situation um, and, and find themselves at, at the mercy of the FCDO without, without the support that they need? Um, I, I think also, as I say, as we come out of COVID and international travel opens up, and as we live in a post-Brexit reality, uh, these are all... You know, it's a perfect storm, in my view, as, as international travel opens up, because we need to make sure that we are ready and prepared um, for the challenges that, that British citizens will face if they either get into trouble or, uh, you know, sadly are, are killed or die, die abroad.